Hey everyone, welcome to Nat One's Tabletop Tavern. My name's Sarah, Amanda, Mickey, and Thomas. Here, you will get to watch us play all sorts of different board games, card games, and pretty much anything that you can play on top of a table. You will get to watch us play the tabletop games for the first time, which means as we learn, you will too. Adventure with us through the ups and downs, the ensuing fights, and me winning almost every game against these three. Asterisk. So tune in every Thursday at 8 a.m. Pacific time for new episodes of Tabletop Tavern. Ex Libris, you are a collector of rare and valuable books in a thriving fantasy town. The mayor has just announced a new seat in the village council, that of Grand Librarian. The prestigious and lucrative position will be awarded to the citizen with the most extraordinary library. Unfortunately, several of your book collector colleagues, more like acquaintances really, are also candidates. To outshine your competition, you'll need to expand your personal bookshelf by sending your trusty assistants out into the village to find the most impressive tomes. Sources for the finest books are scarce, so you'll need to beat your opponents to them when they pop up, especially if they match your secret library focus. You only have a few days before the mayor's official inspector comes to judge your bookshelf, so be sure your assistants have all your books shelved in time. She's a tough cookie, and will use her official inspection form to grade your library on several criteria, including alphabetical order, shelf stability, prominent works, and variety. And don't think she'll turn a blind eye to books that council has banned. You'll need shrewd planning, cunning tactics, and perhaps a little magic to surpass your opponents and become Grand Librarian in Ex Libris. Ex Libris. Ex Libris. Yes. Ta-da. Nice. Thank you. All right, so Amanda and Mickey have already played this. Yes. Um. So I designate you as the rule person. Awesome. It's either me or you, girl. Because we can't read. <laughs> I'm a lawyer. Right? <laughs> um, okay. So in Ex Libris, you're, you're trying to build the best library possible because there's a library judge coming okay. and you want to become the Grand Librarian. <laughs> okay. Okay. And so in order to become the Grand Librarian, librarian, Librarian. <laughs> in order to become the Grand Librarian, there's certain things that you have to do. One of the really unique things about this game is that each game is different because you're pulling random categories for the town that you're in as to which books are banned and which books are like prominent works in the area. So those are those two, prominent works and banned books. So the way that you win the game is to have the best library, which is to earn the most points. Cool. And you earn points by ensuring that your books are in alphabetical order. Okay. Shelf stability, which is um, from bottom to top. So when you place your cards down, which you do by going to certain locations, but when you place them, you have to place them adjacent to another card that you've already played. And so you really have to kind of plan out what you're going to do in terms of them being alphabetical because it's from left to right and top to bottom that they must be alphabetical. So shelf stability is <clears throat> the biggest section or rectangle of um, cards starting at the bottom because obviously if you build a bookshelf and you build it mm -hmm. from the middle up and then there's just like one book on the bottom, everything would topple over. And so you want to have a rectangle. And so you get points for however big your rectangle so, is. Okay, so at the end when we're doing scoring up the points and whatnot, mm -hmm. are we only scoring the books that are within this rectangle? Yes. So that means that the stray books off to the side, they won't count. In terms of shelf stability, they don't count. But in other... In other ways they do count. Okay. Yep. Okay. But... This is a big way to earn points. Okay. So prominent works we talked about, um, and that's like a first, second, third kind of situation for how, who has the most. Okay. They get 15 points. So that's a big one. <clears throat> Banned books get you negative points. And then categorical variety, you take the lowest type of book that you have, and there's six different types, I believe, but you take the lowest type 
and you multiply the number that you have by three. Okay. And also then, the lowest number excludes the prominent and yeah, band. band. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then your library focus, we all are going to be given a secret library focus okay. and it's a type of book. And you get double points for that type of book in the in your library. Hmm. So the game is played by revealing cards that are rooms or locations within your town okay. that you can go to. The locations have different abilities. They do come with these player aids to help you see what the location does so you don't have to be like hovering over the oh, play okay. area. So you can just read about it there. Um, and then on your personal library, which it comes, they're double-sided. Mm -hmm. So some people choose to play with a traditional library. This game has a first time walkthrough and it says to play with the traditional okay. side because your other side gives you special abilities okay. based upon your person. So like I have the Sasquatch, you have the witch, the wizard, the I'm wizard. Sorry, I'm do sorry. you guys prefer colors? No. Oh. Awesome. Thank you. And, um, but on your, place your library area you have spots that you can visit <clears throat> and they allow you to draw a card or to shelve one of your books or book cards so yeah awesome. um one other important thing is the anatomy of the card so i'll put one here for that camera and hold this one up but on the card it has the different types of um books at the top for visual management um the book names are hilarious. They're very funny and punny. So I, I highly recommend reading through them. But the most important thing is the letter mm -hmm. for the shelf. It's an L and it says four out of six. So when you're thinking about a library and it being alphabetical, <clears throat> four out of six means there's three other L cards that come before this and two that come after it. And so if you have this one and then you go and play um, an M or an N next to it, and then you come across another L card. You can't move the other one out of the way. And so you just have to think strategically about where you're going to place these. Or can you? What are you doing? Do you have wizard abilities? <laughs> oh, man. Okay. So, um, yeah. Um, Absolutely. So, okay. So uh, there's uh, a lot of like different kinds of cards here mm -hmm. on the table so these ones stay in front of us these ones we keep as well mm -hmm. these are what we're dealing out yep do we need to shuffle um Probably. yep shuffle them up and then right now what we'll do is we will pull the band uh the band book and the prominent works book so thomas pull us a band book what's band Monster Ooh, the monster manuals are the band. So we put that there. And what is a prominent work of this area? Corrupt codices. Ooh, corrupt oh. codices. Nice. I like it. So, it's good to know. All right, now everybody, I'm just going to mix these all up, will randomly get a prominent focus. Okay. Or, I'm sorry, a uh, library focus. You just want to look at it. And then you want to slide it under your um, mat upside down because it is a secret. Okay. Um, but it just suggests that you keep it there in case you ever need to reference it. And if you notice on your mat, you have a little area that says focus times two. And that's where you place your card. Yes. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Okay. First player is the person that last bought a book, I believe. So does an audio book count? I bought one of those. Mm -hmm. Sure. In time, <laughs> in times of COVID, I'd say yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I uh, bought more on Audible credit. I didn't actually purchase the book. <laughs> oh, it was see, a credit. even more, because I know it's gonna be you, because we did this before. <laughs> All right, fine. It's Sarah. She's first player. <laughs> oh my god. That's the first player token. Hmm. We're supposed to have cards dealt, right? Um. Yes. Okay. So. Do, 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 do. I just need to check because we have four players. We did the card category. Shuffle them. Six. Six to each player. Cool. Okay. 
Okay. And then as first player, you will reveal locations up to the number of players that are present. Uh, so three more? Yes. So the first round is unique because the Diviner's Hut always gets put down first. And um, as you can see, it allows you to become first player for the next round. Mm. Yeah, so, right. <clears throat> okay. that's right. Okay. Yep. I already forgot what I specialize in. Oh, do I improve it? Games. The one you love. Is it the book titles? No, not the titles. Just the way my cards were organized. Mm -hmm. The first three spells on the end. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can go ahead. Do it. Boobs. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, local draft house. Uh huh. Number 12. And then the bookseller, number 10. <laughs> the trigger for the end of the game four players, 12 cards in your bookshelf. So if once the person has shelved 12 cards, you finish that round. And then I believe you do another round. Yes. And then it's a game. Cool. <clears throat> All right. So I go first. Mm -hmm. And the first thing I do is go to a location. Right. So what we just did was called the preparation phase. We prepared the area. <clears throat> okay. Okay. And then now is the placement phase. That tells you exactly what to do. Is there a hand limit? Um, no, I don't believe that there is a hand limit. Okay. <clears throat> so then for the diviner's hut, mm -hmm. if I were to, well, no, never mind. Okay. I can go to my own place, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. That's what I'm doing. Go into my own place, my okay. own laboratory. My laboratory. Dorm. All right. That's my turn, right? Correct. Drawing one card and then taking the first one. It's okay. Nice. All right. Mm -hmm. Oops. I'm going to go here. And that is triggered later, so that's in the cleanup phase. Oh, I didn't understand that. Hmm. The local draft house. Mm -hmm. Dang it. I didn't understand that. But I don't get to do it right away. Yeah, it's right. Triggered later. Yeah. I thought it was like an instant. Mm. She'd want to be like the last person right. to go. No. Yes. Mm. And then I believe it's like in a round robin. So it's like, I get to pick first. And then it goes to the second. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then you keep doing that until all the cards yes. are gone. Yeah. Yeah. So just so you guys know, my special ability is as the Sasquatch, I can't go somewhere that somebody already is, but if I go there first and somebody comes there, I can choose to remove my guy and then I have him to go again. Mm. So potentially- You mean your assistants? Yeah. Not just your Sasquatch dude? That's how I read it. How do you read it? Can is it as anybody? When I read it as I am the Sasquatch. If the opponent visits the Sasquatch's location, you may retrieve it to place again. So is it not I'm the Sasquatch and all no, of my it's systems? It's just, just him. him. Okay, okay, cool. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. So if I had put him there, then I could have done that. Yes. 
So obviously that location, I don't think it's beneficial, but other locations it might be like here. Yeah, I so. agree. Yeah. <clears throat> Your turn. Okay. Um, I'm going, going to get in on this action. <laughs> whoop, whoop, whoop. Over there. Nice. I'm going to go to the bookseller. All right. Take one card from this location and I may shelve it. one and it says I may shelve it and I'm going to <laughs> boom <laughs> I love books <laughs> <laughs> you knew it was gonna happen yeah I like gold <laughs> Nice. The Necro Poppycock. Mm. The Necromancer's Guide to Strong Skeletons. You should send a picture of that to Justin. Mm. <laughs> you can take a picture with uh, one of the cameras or whatever. Whatever, we can take all of the pictures. <laughs> I don't think I have my number in his phone, so. You're in the group text. Just send it to the group text. Alright, I'm going to the bookseller as well. Nice. Okay, so now I can yes. choose, before you take your action, I can choose to take him back, and I am going to. But I can continue? Yes, now you can continue, but it specifies oh, that if you, I have to do it before <laughs> yeah. you take your action. Okay. So. Because it, I can understand why. Mm -hmm. Okay. Draw a couple. All right, cool. Um, I'm going to go here and draw a card. You don't have any? Mm -mm. Mickey doesn't. Mm -hmm. I do. That's right. Um, I'm going to go here. And I'm going to play this. Okay. So now it is the um, cleanup phase. Not cleanup. They call it something else. Hold on. It's the resolution phase. There we go. The phase. Yes. Okay. So the resolution phase. So during this time, we need to delayed effect cards, mm -hmm. impact those. Nobody was at the garbage dump. So um, in the location as a delayed effect, activate it by following the text. So what does it say, Mickey? So the player on space one below reveals two cards from the deck for every assistant at this location. Uh, in the order below, each player takes one card until none remain. Wait a second. I think we've read this wrong. Hmm. The player on space one below reveals two cards from the space or from the deck for every assistant at the. Oh, never mind. Yeah, there's eight yeah. cards. I was yep. thinking their assistants. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. Um, everybody draws one until none remain. Uh, any cards may be shelved. Okay. So one. Two, because I'm player one. That's why I started. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Three, a uh, four, five, seven, and eight. All right. So I get to pick first. <clears throat> I'll take this one. And I am going to show it. Who's orange? Me. Yeah. I'm going to take this one. Put it into the deck. Mm -hmm. It's funny, we went in order. <clears throat> yeah. Thank you.
Okay, and then now we discard any of these that remain. Oh shoot, um, those could have been shelved. Oh well. Yeah, they can't be shelved if you want to. I remember this one. It's a whole other person. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now in the cleanup phase, so after everything has been resolved, um, we check to see which town board is first in numerical order, which is the diviner's hut. And so we move that up. Mickey has first player token, so he is the first player. And then these get discarded, and then we start the preparation phase again. Nice. And that's it. Awesome. Okay. Oh, I need the colors. Yep. So I can just take. And then these become permanent fixtures in your town is kind of like the idea. Nice. Cool. Okay.
Boom! All right, and I'm going to place that and that. Okay. And that is the end. Nice. All right. So is there anything we still go through like the cleanup and everything. So is there any in triggers? No. Nope. No. Okay. So now it says for final round, the person with the best handwriting becomes the judge. Okay. That me or you? That's you. Okay, cool. Excellent. Excellent. I love trying to raise my hands. <laughs> And this is really cool because there are two sides. Apparently, there are some different things that you can do in here with like a public library oh. and like establishing different works. So there's variations. Um, so there's like a public library section. Anyway, so we're going to do this side and I'm just going to write our initials at the top. Now, before the officiant comes, you have a chance to flip over any of your books not to entomb them but if they're like out of the alphabetical order okay in order to get more points you can flip things over mm -hmm. so you can choose to <laughs> right you can choose to do that now okay um so it goes sarah nikki amanda thomas smat <laughs> um okay so go ahead and assess your neighbor's alphabetical order situation and then just let me know if they have achieved alphabetical order <laughs> Pretty easy. Thanks. <laughs> Wait, actually, I gotta check the numbers. That's what matters. Yeah, that's All really. Right. Numbers are legit. Yeah. <laughs> I had to check my own too. So, this is not right. Hmm. A, B, C, D, E. Oops, I got crisscrossed. Eh? So, do you want to put <laughs> that one over before the librarian comes? Because then it would count as alphabetical order. So looks good. Yeah. yeah? Okay. You're good? Yep. And okay. he's good. Oh, shoot. I could have used that stupid fucking... Yeah, you could have done a swappy swap. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So everybody's alphabetical order now. All right. So we are going to... The prominent works is the Corrupted Codices. And mm -hmm. so you circle that. And then you cross out the banned book, which is Monster Manual. Mm -hmm. Just for reference. Okay. It tells you to do that. Okay. So now we're going to categorically tally and you count each of the bubbles for each category. Okay. So we'll talk, we'll start with corrupted codices. Um, so just count how many uh, skulls you have. Got five. One. Nine. Nine. Okay. Fantastical fictions. Nine. Yellow historical volumes. Five. Nikki? Five. Tommy? Three. Monster manuals. Five. Three. Two. Reference text blue. Spells and potions. Six. Ten. One. Okay, so that's section A. So we just go through and tally everything. So now we're going to go through and survey the shelf stabil stability and all of these different things. So shelf stability, you're going to start with your bottom shelf mm -hmm. and the minimum is basically four because it's going to be how many cards wide and how many tall mm -hmm. starting at the bottom shelf? How many are you? I have four on my bottom shelf. Well, so your, yeah, four would be. And then I, but only yeah. this needle section. That, yeah. <laughs> okay. Is... So you get four. I've got nine. Nikki's got nine. nine. I also have nine. You have nine? Yep. Awesome. Well. Do the flip pole. That they doesn't don't. count. They don't? Not that. I don't know about your entombed one. That one doesn't because you were not in alphabetical order. So it would be four. Yeah. Or would it be six if his attuned? Oh, I'm sorry. It would be six if it counts. You're in yeah. Six. Six? Okay. All right. Now, prominent words, 
works awards. So we go to the corrupted codices. Uh, Thomas had nine at the most, so he gets fifteen points nice. for that. Um, I had second most with six, so that's nine points. And then who had Mickey okay. had four? Okay, Mickey had four, five. Four points. Four points. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, just gonna get zero points. Assigned ban or assigned banned book penalties. So. For that one, you get minus five, Sarah, minus three for Mickey, minus eight for me, and minus two for Thomas. Okay, categorical variety bonuses. So your lowest one, except for these two, right? So not those. Um, so what's that, Sarah, that's your reference text? Okay. So you get 12 points because it's times three. Okay. Um, Mickey. At five is my lowest. Five, okay. So 15. My lowest was three, so nine. And then Thomas, your lowest was one, so three. And then you reveal your focus. Sarah? Uh, spells and potions. Okay, so you get 12 points because you had six of those. Mickey? Uh, reference text. Which is blue, so you get 12 points. Mine was historical volumes. I had 13, so I get 26 points. Thomas? Fantastic. Hot screen, so you get 18 points. Nice. Now we do math. Okay. okay. And so we just add up the scores in section B. So, uh, what is that? 11 plus 12, 23. 23. Sarah? Okay. And then Mickey, 10, 25, 37. 45. Yep. And then Thomas. 40. Is that right? 16, 19, 34, 40. Yeah. Oh, thank you for coming mm -hmm. up with it. I was yeah. adding in my head. So these are the final scores. I win! I win! <laughs> But actually, if you notice, not by as much as you guys may have been thinking. Thomas was close. Thomas, yeah, was, Thomas was close. He was very close. Even had it flipped, I feel like he would have. He yeah. Had had, uh, only two points behind. Mm -hmm. But you would have got the books on that one too. Yeah, if he would have been in order. Yes. If those had been in order, you could have won. Yeah, he would. Well, this was an entombed one, so he didn't. Don't you get extra for entombed? Two more points. Did you already count that? No. Oh, well, so 42, so that's even closer. Yeah. And so, yeah, he wouldn't have gotten nine if that one had been in order. Then that would have probably put him over. Yeah. He would have won't beat me. Damn. Damn. <sighs> Just because I didn't look at that top right corner. <laughs> Just let you know, bro. He comes after me. <laughs> so today we played Ex Libris. Ex Libris. Ex Libris. Ex Libris. Ex Libris is a game for lover of books. It does have a lot of rules that go into play. I'd say this is an above 18 uh, game. I don't think that a lot of kids would have fun playing this game. The game is pretty fun. First thing I'll mention is that it's not as complicated as it looks at, in the beginning. It's so much fun. You basically get to choose at random which librarian you're going to be and it gives you a special ability. You're trying to build a library quickly um, over the course of several rounds by going to different location cards that are flipped up at the beginning of each round. Each game you'll have a difference of which card is the prominent book and which other books are banned in the area. Um, collecting the prominent books is definitely a good way to score points because scoring 15 points with the most prominent books will definitely put you close to the top. You are trying to make the most organized and beautiful library. And the books have really funny titles and they have like punny names and whatnot. So uh, that was awesome. In order to help each of the players know which places did what, there was some sort of player aid um, that was made out of shiny paper that was kind of like a cutout. The little pe cheat sheets for 
each location so that way you don't have to like hover over the actual like location tile but it's like perforated paper and then they made it double-sided uh, front and back and so potentially you could have two locations out that share the same cheat sheet so you have to keep flipping it I don't know I feel like it's a really good idea and something that they should keep in as part of the game as that small cheat sheet but I don't know make it a little bit different I didn't do so well um I love books and I love libraries but I did not do well in this one I think I would give this game a 7 out of 10 which sounds weird because I really want to give it a higher score, but like I love books and I love libraries and I love board games, but I still would only give this one a seven out of 10. So as always, I talk about my thoughts on like taking this game out and about either to your friend's house, family house, or I even consider camping and this game is a little complex uh, for people who just play board games every so often. For people who play board games frequently, I think this would be totally fine and lots of fun. Overall, I like the game. I'd give it a 7 out of 10. I really wouldn't want to play this game like with my friends or anything, but it it's a fun family game and I wouldn't say no to it. I should have won. <sighs> I should have won. <laughs> I kind of screwed myself over at the end. One, Amanda was quickly uh, putting books into her bookcase shelving area, and she ended the game quicker than I think any of us thought she would. But I would have had a chance to win if I had simply taken the chance to swap a D shelving unit with an E shelving unit. The game is really fun, actually. Uh, I thought I'd be bored to death by a game about librarians and books, but it would be a game that I play again in the future. I would rate it eight out of 10. I did win, but it was really close. And looking at the gameplay, you wouldn't think it would be so close because I had played down so many cards and triggered the end of the game pretty quickly. But because Thomas was strategic about which cards he was playing, um, making sure not to use the banned cards because those get you negative points and really focus on what would get him the most points, he almost beat me. And had it been for not one little mistake of alphabetization at the end where he had to flip a card over um, that he made, he would have actually had more points than I did. So Ex Libris, I absolutely love. Um, I would recommend this. It is one to four players, ages 10 and up, takes about 45 minutes. It is true to that. So it's a really excellent game. Thank you guys for joining us on today's Tabletop Tavern. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as we did. Let us know what you thought in the comments below and let us know what new games might be coming out that you'd be interested in seeing us review or play. Also, follow along on our life journey by checking out our website or social media sites like Facebook, Twitter, or in and Instagram. All links are down in the description below. Like, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell. And we'll see you next week on Tabletop Tavern. <laughs> <laughs>